Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman O oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack, the prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting, while follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But O oh, heart, 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 O oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells, rise up for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills, for you the bouquets and ribbon wreaths, for you the shores are crowding, for you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse, no will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes in with object won. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. All right, so if we look at our poem, we do have three distinct stanzas. Obviously, uh, we have more than 14 lines. I think we have 29. So this poem is not a uh, it's not a sonnet. It's not a rondeau. It's not a haiku. And it's most certainly also not a limerick. So we have an example here, free verse. Um, interesting enough that Walt, Whit Walt Whitman was regarded as the father of free verse in poetry. All right, the entire poem is an extended metaphor. Uh, comparing the passage of America through the Civil War between the Southern and Northern States, the Union and Confederate forces, to being a voyage, and of course, um, making Abraham Lincoln the captain. All right, the narrator, and uh, the term I've used before was fanboy. Whitman was a major fan of um, Abraham Lincoln, so the... Uh, the entire poem can be seen as, you know, a massive lament for the loss of this person. And uh, it's quite obvious that uh, Whitman felt this uh, very, very personally. So uh, this is narrated from the perspective of a sailor on the ship. All right, going line by line. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. Fearful, obviously, the synonym would be risky. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. So weathered every rack, you can imagine a, a ship that's, that's involved in a whole bunch of battles is not going to be in amazing shape. It will be alive. So think of weathered. You think of somebody with tremendous, uh, you know, spent a lot of time in the sun, so there were quite a lot of um, wrinkles, etc. So it's weathered. And racks would be battles or, you know, storms or, or difficult situations as a country would face during a civil war. The prize we sought is won. So the prize would be their objective has been reached. And, of course, victory won. The port is near. The bells are here. The people all exulting. So the ship's getting closer to the shore, and they can hear everyone on the, on the shore exulting would be a synonym for celebrating. While f follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. So the keel would be the center of the ship, and the vessel grim and daring. So grim would be quite serious, and a lot of the warships at that point in time uh, were quite scary looking vessels. I mean, you think of sailboats, you think of beautiful sails and woodwork, etc. These were not nice looking ships. All right, your dreadnoughts, um, in other words, also meaning to fear nothing. Um, although also called ironclad, they had iron uh, sides and they were able to repel cannonballs, unlike wooden ships. So they were quite scary to look at. And the daring, obviously, the men that sailed the ships were quite brave. But oh, heart, 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 this is lament. Uh, the speaker is very upset by what he's seeing now. Oh, the bleeding drops of red. It's the evidence of the wound that has resulted in the death of the captain. Where on the deck, my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. The use of my is interesting. It personalizes it. It shows that this has had a tremendous effect 
on the speaker. In this case, the sailor or the poet, Walt Whitman. Oh, captain, my captain. Now, at this point of time, the poet or the speaker knows that the person he's addressing is dead. So we have a figure of speech here, we've got apostrophe. Rise up and hear the bells. And the bells are being rung in the town and the port as a sign of celebration. Rise up, for you the flag is flung. We have alliteration in that line, the three Fs. For you the bugle trills. Okay, so it's a military uh, brass instrument and it's being sounded to announce the arrival of this person who's held in massive reverence. The celebrations are not for the arrival of the ship, they're for the arrival of this captain. For you bouquets and ribbon wreaths, these are methods of, dec of, of celebration or decorations. For you the shores are crowding, many people have arrived. For you they call the swaying mass, so it's a lot of people moving around. The eager face is turning. Yeah, Captain, dear father. Now, the dear father is very interesting. Um, it could imply him being the father of the U.S. It could denote his wisdom or leadership. It could even be spiritual. You think of fathers being heads of churches. Or it could even denote a personal connection between the speaker and the fallen captain. This arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. So the notion of it's a mentioning of a dream implies uh, the surreal nature of this, and the guy is still bargaining with what he's seeing. He hasn't accepted it yet. My captain doesn't answer. Over the third stanza, he's starting to accept the reality of the situation. His lips are pale and still. These are signs of death. Obviously, he's pale. There's no blood flow. He's bled out, and still his lips aren't moving. He's not breathing anymore. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound. Again, the, the alliteration, the three S sign, is uh, being repeated. We could also call that what, guys? Sibilance. It's voyage closed and done. The war is over. Slavery has been abolished. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object one. So that's a victory over the opponents. So particularly the object could be the abolition of slavery, which was a major point of the war, was the ownership of slaves. Exalt our shores and ring our bells. But I, with mournful tread, that means his grief, walk the deck my captain lies fallen cold and dead. I'd also like you to note the contrast between the shore and the deck. So on the shore we've got the, the bells are ringing, there are wreaths, the bouquets of flowers, crowds of people eagerly facing the ship. So there's jubilation on the shore. But on the deck we've got this young guy, the sailor, and he's full of grief. So that transition or that comparison is quite important. All right, gentlemen, I hope this has been useful, a useful exercise for you. Please refer to the questions on the poem and answer them to the best of your ability. You will find that in the folder for Term 2 Poetry in your Grade 9 Schoology folder.